Okay, now that the patch has been put back into the office garage, and so it's time to make our next purchase, and considering that the last Dupachi was a particularly nice car, I think I'm going to now go ahead and continue with my Dupachi collection. After all, why not with this $10 million spending spree actually buy a complete set of cars, and the Dupachis seem like the ideal choice to do that with. So here we go, and the next vehicle is going to be the Dubachi 7.0, or the Dubachi 70, I'm not entirely sure how they intend you to read that. 7.7.7.7.0.7.70? I've got no idea. Anyway, right here, now here we go. I'm going to put this in white, I think, to start with, and order it, as always, to the Hillcrest residence, and to get there, I shall be taking the scramjet just for shits and giggles. Okay, here we go, getting a little bit closer now, but of course with the scramjet, the danger is you're always going to hit something at high speed. Okay, I seem to be doing quite a good job here, don't you think? I certainly do. Much better than my usual standard. Okay, here we go, I'm going to go up here and why not have a bit of fun with it? Launch it into the air. After all, that is what the scramjet is all about. Okay, here we go, and landing on the roof, no, not on the... oh, right, okay. Right, I've landed on someone's porch. Okay, never mind, I'll just simply hop off here, get myself out of trouble, onto the grass and drive away. Right, oh, oh, oh dear. Okay, I seem to have squashed someone. Terribly sorry about that, I had no intention of squishing you like a fly. Okay, what am I going to do here? Right, hop onto the roof, I think. Here we go, there we go, jolly good, up and over, and okay, arm out. Right, may have murdered an innocent person, but... That's really small fry when it comes to the importance of spending millions of dollars on luxury cars. Okay, now here we go. We're bringing the scramjet down to the uh, Hillcrest residence. And let's go and see if our Dubachi 770 has been delivered. Okay, then. Ah, okay, now there we go, here is the Dubachi 770, and I must admit it does look already a little better than the uh, previous Dubachi, the Dubachi Spectre, the front is still rather plain, but the back isn't quite so gopping as the other. I mean, it's not particularly fantastic in my personal opinion, but it's not nearly as bad as the Spectre. Okay, now let's hop in and give it one more quick round, and then we'll take it out for a drive. Okay... Well, uh, yes, not bad, really. You know, I had, can't even recall how much co this car cost to buy, but it looks okay. Right then, here we go. Taking it out of the street, let's spend an absolute ice age in the dark, shall we? Okay, here we go. Out onto the street. Let's see how this Dubachi handles. The Dubachi Wagner and the Dubachi Spectre both handle superbly, so this car has a lot to live up to. Okay, it's leading up to it quite well, to be quite frank with you. It's got high speed and it's gripping these corners, as you can see, around the Finewood Hills. Very nice, well indeed, very tight indeed. Okay, right then. Yes, this car is absolutely fantastic, isn't it? My goodness, Dubachi's done another one. Okay, then I really didn't expect I'd end up being such a Dubachi enthusiast, to be honest with you, but... Okay, yes, this car really is absolutely sublime to drive, my goodness. Okay, so that's the Dubachi Wagner, the Dubachi Spectre, and the Dubachi 770 that are all highly recommendable vehicles. They handle fantastically, they drive superbly, and they all have very reasonable top ends. Okay, here we go. Now, this isn't a Benny's vehicle, so we're going to take it back to the regular custom auto shop and have the work commenced there. Okay, let's go ahead, shall we? I don't know why that takes so long. Okay, this is the debauch being delivered. Okay, and we're taking it into the custom auto shop, and as always, during this stage of the video, we are going to speed up the rate somewhat, so it doesn't take as long as it would. Okay, now we're going to go through the different options here, and I don't know what I think about those side skirts really, and I'm not going to have too big a spoiler on this car, okay, I think that makes it look somewhat more stylish. Okay, let's flip through some of these now.
Right, what are we doing? Are we under the colour yet? That's all I really care about, as I've stated previously. So, who's killing who? Right then, now, I believe my Dubachi Wagner is in a blue, and my Spectre is in a yellow, and so this car is going to need to go with something equally ostentatious. Okay. Those two colours do look quite nice, but they are rather muted. The traditional green is perhaps the more suitable car for this or should I say the more suitable colour for this car, as it's largely based upon the Aston Martin, I believe. Okay then, well, green, how about that? No, I don't like it, you know. But then again, why, well, I don't know. You see, these colours do suit it rather more, I do feel, and it would be a, a more suitable colour, but they just won't go alongside the bright and vivid yellow and blue of the other batches, and so, unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to put this car in a hideous lime green, and perhaps add a pearlescent flip just to soften the edge somewhat. Okay. Right, let's take a look at some of these. No, I really don't like any of them, if I'm perfectly honest with you. No, none of them seem to be working really, do they? Okay, never mind. Right, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and put it in a classic colour then. After all, my Wagner and my Spectre are in classic colours, and in wishing to keep in theme, why not just go ahead and keep things simple? I'll keep this in a classic too. Okay, now let's take it out and see how she handles on the street with the modifications. Okay, then, here we go. Right, then, let's take it right. No, hold on a minute. I don't normally go right, do I? No, I've got to go straight straight up the hill. That's where I normally go, of course. What was I thinking? Okie dokie, here we go. Let's take it out and see how she handles, shall we? Now, I'll remind you, she was rather splendid as a drive with her, without any modifications. So, let's see how she handles now. Okay, absolutely beautifully. Yes, this car really is absolutely fantastic. If you've been considering purchasing it, I really do recommend it. You will not be disappointed. Uh, I have to say, Rockstar have uh, made it so Dubachi have made some rather fine cars in this game. Okay, now, despite the fact that I seem to be hitting absolutely everything on the street, let's see if we can get it up to speed and get down to this final left corner. Okay, not a good start. Right then, okay, here we go. Try and get past these bug. No, okay, not that one either. Okay, right then. Okay, virtually no one in front of me now. Here comes the corner. Surely I can get... No, I can't. Okay, never mind. Right, well, I really have sort of put that in the gutter, rather, I'm afraid, and I believe the video cuts out here, and so, yes, there we go. Okay, not the particularly best test run there for the Dubachi, uh, my goodness, what was it, the 770? Uh, but I can assure you that it really is an absolutely fantastic vehicle to drive. Okay, so now it's time to go and add it to the Dubachi collection, and in we go. Right, EO, now the car's been securely placed in the Dubachi collection, we can go ahead and why not buy another car and see if we can't just complete that collection in this spending spree. Okay, so then, I believe that is the, uh, the Wagner, the Spectre, and the 770. So that leaves us the Masakaro and God knows else what out there to buy. Okay, so let's go ahead. Now, the Masakaro was on the San Andreas Sports site, but I do believe that there is another version of it on Legendary Motorsports somewhere down here. Okay, I'm just going to take a little scroll and see if I can find it. Okay, now where is it? I know it's somewhere down here. Okay, where are you? Ah, right, there we go. Yes, the Dubachi Masakaro. Okay, that's coming in at 2.75, or rather 0.275 of a million. And I do believe it's also sold down here, and I've just gone past it. Where was it? Have I gone past it, or is it down further? No, no, there we go. Right here, and that's coming in at three, 300,000, or uh, 385,000. Okay, well, that's the one I'll get. I've been reliably informed that it is the better vehicle, and so I'm taking my drift car up there. I believe this is a Tampa, uh, and I shall go in and retrieve the Masakaro. Okay, there we go, and we've got to the Hillcrest residence, and we'll pop inside the garage 
and see if the Pubachi has been delivered. Let's cross our fingers. Okay, and there it is, the Dubachi Massacaro and the uh, the special edition from the San Andreas Sports. I do believe this is supposed to have improved handling or acceleration or top speed or a combination of any or all of those. Okay, then. Right, then, it was, uh, I believe, over $100,000 more, but in this kind of spending spree, that really is inconsequential. Okay, then. Not a bad-looking vehicle, though, to be honest with you. Not particularly interesting, but not as gopping as the Spectre. Okay, dry streets, not a bad sign. We'll take it out, see what we can do. Now, this vehicle, bear in mind, is significantly cheaper than the other ones that we've purchased, and so there's no reason to think that it's going to be in the same sort of league, although I've got to say, my goodness, it's handling fantastic. Yes, it really is handling... Oh, right, okay, clipped that one, but that was my fault. Okay, it's got good top speed, it feels... Good acceleration, the handling already has impressed me, and... Okay, then, let's take it around this corner and out onto the street, down to the office. Okay, it seems to have handled that quite well, too, to be perfectly honest with you. Okie dokie, yes, I had a couple of problems recording there, but we're back with it now, and okay. Yes, I've got to say, even for a cheap car, or one of the cheaper cars in the Dubachi terms, this really does handle well. Let's take it down to the end corner and see... Okay, didn't go where hit the fence, didn't even go onto the footpath, just managed to get around that corner without any problems whatsoever. Right, okay, well done, Dubachi. Another fantastic vehicle. Uh, not having the best of luck there, am I? Ah, okay, here we go. Office Garage 2, yes, yes, thank you very much indeed. Okay, now we're sending up to the garage and we'll take it to the custom auto shop and here we go as always we're running at double speed here to uh hasten things along somewhat okay now we're looking at the front bumpers and the rear splitters there and yes why not add them both okay jolly good right then here we go just going through a few of the vents i think and why not it is after all a racing car Okay then, hood. No, I don't want to. Don't want to spoil the library. I think, and I think, as the car is quite bright, I've got a yellow and a blue and a, a green. I think I can keep it in the orange. And as it's designed to be a racing car, I think on this occasion I will keep the library on it. It may perhaps somewhat clash with the whole general aesthetic of the collection, but I think there's a chance it may work. Okay, yes, we're definitely going to have a spoiler though. We uh, always appreciate the added traction. Okay, then. No, I think the GT wing is just a step too far, though, isn't it, really? Okay. Yes, that'll work, I think. Right here. Go through some more of these options. Yes, well, well how about that? We can change the colour underneath the, uh, underneath the livery there, but... Yes, I do think orange, considering that we've got the green and the yellow and the blue, perhaps is the right colour to go for. Okay, now we're going to take it out to the ground and see how she handles with the modifications. Okay, the sun's coming up. Streets are still dry. Okay, it's got good acceleration, as we would expect. Handling's fantastic. Yes, I really do like these cars, I have to say. Yes, I am absolutely surprised. I thought perhaps it would be the, uh, the Garotti's... Uh, or perhaps the, uh, oh, I can't even remember what they're called now, the Porsche ones, what are they called? Uh, I perhaps thought they would be the cars that impressed me most on this game, but as it turns out, it is the Dubatches, yes. Well, that's, that's four Dubatches now in my collection that I am quite taken with. Okay, now it's been done up, we'll take it down to the, uh, the far end, let's see what happens here. Okay, I span out, entirely my problem there, but, uh, I do feel that it wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't have hit that fence and it wouldn't have gone off the footpath had I been able to hold my... Right, okay, what happened there? Right, obviously came around that corner a little quickly, didn't I? And the video had cut out, but uh, I'm sure we could see what had happened. Okay then, now then. Uh, 
Here we go, adding it back to the collection. So that's the Wagner, the Spectre, the 770, and the Massacaro. But of course, that does not constitute a complete collection. And so I fear that we're going to have to uh, return to the website and perhaps purchase one of the lower end two batches just to add another vehicle to the collection. And here we go. Okay, so the vehicle we're going to be going for is the Exemplar. And uh, with 2020 hindsight, I can assure you I wish I had not purchased this vehicle as it is a four-door and is not as sleek and streamlined as the two-door that they sell. However, I was not really fully paying attention at this point and I thought the Exemplar would be the good car to go for. I was wrong. Okay, now we're going to send it to the Hillcrest residence. We're arriving there in a flying Deluxo, which is always realistic and here we are okay now we're just going to hop inside and see if it's been delivered yes it is a rather beautiful day though isn't it all right okay and there we go it's been delivered fantastic Right, yo, the Dubachi Exemplar, was it? The Dubachi Exemplar. Okay. Yes, now already I'm starting to regret my decision to go for the four door, but there we go. Yes, yeah, styling's a little bit sort of suburban, isn't it, really? But okay, let's take it out and see what happens. After all, the other Dubachis have been quite fun to drive. Okay, can it get up this hill? Right, okay. Yes. Right, well, I can instantly see this isn't of the same caliber as the other two patches. Okay, yes. Its speed's not really that exciting, and its handling's a little bit loose there. Uh, not as tight as the other cars, and really, yes. I mean, I suppose one wouldn't expect as much for the money, really, but... Yeah, it's not particularly impressive. In fact, quite hot, hideous, I'd have to say. Okay, never mind. Well, after all, this is just a very cheap car to complete a, a Dubachi collection. As I say, a handful of Dubachis really won't do. It does need to be at least five to be constituted a collection, in my opinion. Okay, here we go. Right, we're taking it down. Oh, and whoops, and never mind. Okay, let's see how it handles the far corner. Why not? Okay, we've got up to some top speed here. Let's see if it kisses that fence. And it's going to, isn't it? Yes, well, if that motor had been in the way, I think I'd have slid all the way into that fence there. Okay, now we've got it back, and here we go, taking it in. I have absolutely no idea why the video keeps cutting like that, but it does. Okay, extended shot of the garage doors, how lovely. Okay, now we're taking it in, and we're going to take it into the auto custom shop, and uh, see if we can't just improve that ride somewhat. Okay, we'll go through the standard, the armor, the brakes, and such forth, uh, engine improvements, turbo, if there is one, of course. Uh, and then we're going to go down to the most significant aspect, which will be the coloring. Okay, now, of course, we have got rather vivid and bright colors for the other two batches, and so this one, fortunately, will have to go along with that scheme. And I'm not entirely sure than the blue, the orange, the yellow, and the green, what other particular colors we could really go for. And I do really rather feel it's going to have to be the pink, isn't it? Okay, well, I haven't got a pink car at all in my collections, and I don't wish to give off the wrong signals of being some kind of latter-day homophobe. And so, why not go ahead and colour this car in a rather... Oh, and now I think about it, actually implying the car pink is sort of homophobic, isn't it? Okay, well, ignore that altogether. Uh, I wouldn't want to think that I was in any way against that... Right, I've put it in green. Right, I don't remember doing that one little bit. I thought I put it in pink. Okay, well, never mind. A green it is, apparently. Right here, let's see how it handles with the modifications that we're taking it up the hill. And as you can see, it's accelerating with the same sort of speed as a dead horse might. 
Okay, video cut out there, but we're down to the significant corner at the bottom end, and my goodness, I can't even get over a light post. Okay, yes, this car really, uh, really isn't of the same ilk of it as its siblings. Okay, then. I mean, it's not awful, don't get me wrong, it's nowhere near as bad as the Pegasi Tesseract, for example. But I've got to say that, all in all, I regret buying this vehicle. It has absolutely nothing going for it. Perhaps, I suppose, if you're looking to transport four people at a time in a relatively quick vehicle, then you might choose this. But one would ask, why wouldn't you choose the four-door, and I wish I could remember what they were called, the Porsches. The Neon, I believe. Ah, that's it, yes, the Fist of Neon. So, yes, if one was looking for a four-door sports car to transport one's crew around in, why would one not choose the Fist of Neon? I suppose perhaps because it cost about four times as much as the Dubachi, but I don't know what your reasons are. Okay, now here we go. We're delivering the Dubachi Exemplar up to the Dubachi Collection in its rather peculiar crew colours. Okay, now here we are. We're going to sit ourselves back down at the computer and continue with this shopping spree. Okay, then. Now, what else is there to buy? We've had ourselves the... That Pegasi Tesseract, we've had ourselves the Turfe the Trofeda Nero, we've brought ourselves a number of Dubatches, so what else shall we buy ourselves? Okay then, we could always buy ourselves another Pegasi, of course, to go in that Pegasi collection, but I think I already have one, to be honest, or at least one of the ones that I was looking at just there. Okay then, what else have we got down here? We've got the Debachi 770, already got that, 811, we've got that, there's quite a few cars here we do have, but there are far more that we need to purchase. Okay then, how about a Pegasi Osiris? Right, yes, okay, right, it's rather expensive, two million dollars, give or take, but... Yes, I think I have got the other one that I was looking at, so we've got the Reaper there. 2.5, 2.6 million, so it's either the Reaper or the Osiris, and you know what, I'm feeling like splurging out today, so why not go ahead and buy that Osiris? Okay, and we'll go ahead and stick it in a yellow, a rather bright and ostentatious colour, see how it looks, deliver it to the Hillcrest residence, and here we go. Now, I believe I've taken a grotty vision up there to go and pick it up. I've got absolutely no idea why, but it did drive rather well. Okay, then. So, yes, right, here we are. Up at the Hillcrest residence to see if uh, the Pegasi Osiris has been delivered, which is uh, essentially a $2 million sports car, so it really should be quite good. Okay, there we go. Right, explosions outside, never a good sign. And okay, interesting looking vehicle, don't know quite how I feel about it. Front's okay, back's gone a bit wrong, hasn't it? Maybe with a spoiler we can even that out a little. Okay. Yes, it is rather heavy on the back, isn't it? A lot of panel work there. Okay, well, take a look around without me ruining the view. And there we go. Right, well... Let's see how she drives. Radio, another nice sunny day in San Andreas for a test drive of a elite sports car. And here we go. Right, first impressions. Very good. Very good indeed. Okay, she's going very fast and she's holding that road particularly well. Okay. Yes, handling is excellent. Handling and speed are excellent. Okay, I am rather impressed by this car. I didn't know quite what to expect. Two million dollars, uh, like I say, for the 2.8 with the Tesseract, one felt absolutely ripped off. But for two million dollars for this sports car or supercar, whichever category it falls into, certainly feels worth it. Okay, unfortunately I didn't give the, uh, the hard corner there much of a test because of my poor driving skills. But let's not concern that. Uh, let's not concern ourselves with that. You can take my word for it. This really is a rather good car. Certainly better than the Pegasi Tesseract. It may not have a higher top speed. I couldn't possibly comment on that. But it is much more pleasurable to drive. Okay, now my Pegasi collection, like my Bugatti collection, or rather my Dubachi collection, should I say, is in my second story office garage. And so that is where we shall take the Osiris now. And here we go.
Right now all that remains is to take it into that custom shop and get it upgraded. Okay, here we go, starting with the armor. Brakes, bumpers, front and back, why not? Okay, let's see what looks right on this vehicle. I'm not too sure to be honest with you. I don't know if I do like that. Okay, well I suppose it'll help give it some speed. Or some traction, I should say. We'll put some splitters in the back. We know we're going to anyway. Okie dokie, what else have we got here? Right, bending on the side, is it? Skirts? Go on then, why not? Okay, spoiler. Now, this hopefully will rescue the look of the back. Can we get something low down on it? No, okay, never mind. We'll go for that. Right here. Right, I think we've been through everything now, haven't we? It's just time for the respray. Okay, then, jolly. Right. Oh, right. Okay, I was not expecting that. It's two tone. Okay, well, I suppose that's interesting. We might be able to have some fun with it. Right then, okay then. Let's have a look. Right, we'll keep that in a yellow and. And what do we think of that? I don't quite know. It's a little... Maybe. Let's see what it's like with the white. No, God, no, that doesn't look right at all. It looks like an egg. Okay, no, right. Okay, maybe the blue. Yes, we'll keep the blue. Perhaps if we flip that yellow a little bit brighter to the racing yellow. There we go. Okay, that really is rather, uh... Rather gaudy, isn't it? Okay, I think I'm going to keep that. Yes, to hell with good taste. That'll do for me, I think. Let's try a few other colours, see what's going on. Right, okay, don't know if I like that. Okay. Another blue, perhaps? Yes? No? No, you do. You know what, I really do think that the yellow is going to be... going to be the colour that wins the day. Okay, that's a little too close to the Nero, isn't it? Okay, don't like that. All blue? It seems a shame to waste that double coloration. Yes, I think it's going to be the uh, the rather gaudy colors of yellow and blue. Okay, is there anything else that works without yellow? No. The black, I don't know. That seems a little atypical, really. No, I'm not happy with any of those colors. It's going to be the blue. Okay, jolly good. All right, now we've upgraded this vehicle, we've modified it to some extent, now let's take it out onto the street and let's see how she handles in comparison with her previous drivability. Okay, and here she goes, launching up the hill like a rocket. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> Inside on that car, right, fantastic indeed. Right then, this car really is superb. It really is flying around these corners, as you can see, limited only by its driver, I would say. Okay, we're coming down this road now. We'll get a chance to try it up against the hard right that we... whoops it is No, I've passed it. Okay, never mind. Missed that one. Okay, that really is a shame, really, because it would have been nice to test that against its more expensive counterpart, the Pegasi Tesseract, but never mind. Here we go. We're going to head on down the main straight here, and we'll test it up against that left-hand corner instead. It's not exactly the same corner, but we'll be able to see how it handles around here. No, it cut out. Okay. What a pity. Oh, well, that really is rather irritating. Okay, never mind. Right, okay, then here we go. The last car of the day, I believe. And we're going to go ahead and buy the Pegasi Torino. Or, well, I can't remember what the hell it was called, actually. But anyway, we're going to deliver it, as always, to the Hillcrest residence. I believe I'm taking, uh, and is that the entity up there? Overflood? It's certainly an overflood. I don't know if it's the entity XF or the entity whatever, whatever. Who cares? Okay then, now we're here at the Hillcrest residence, and with a little bit of luck, our last Dupachi of the day will have been delivered. Okay, and I don't know why the video keeps jumping so much, but it evidently is, and here we are. This is the vehicle that we're looking at. It's a rather old-fashioned retro 1980s version, but I've got to admit I am rather taken by it. Okay, right then. That's how it looks. Let's take it out and see how it drives. Okay, quite sluggish to be honest with you, straight off the line. There's nothing really there. No particular guts to this car. It uh, makes a lot of noise, but okay, the handling's a little loose too.
Well, I suppose that is sort of accurate for the classical era type car that it is. The 1980s Lamborghinis were not known as particularly good cars to drive, and this being a somewhat of an imitation of that vehicle holds true to it. Although perhaps this is the uh, more of the 90s version. I can't tell if this is supposed to be a, a Countach or a Diablo. Okay then. Right, we're going to take it down this straight here and have a little giggle when it comes to that far left hand corner because I can't help but feel this car has no handling ability whatsoever. Now why I've put it in cinematic mode has baffled even me because of course that was going to happen. Okay, right, I think I've killed someone there. Whoops, okay, let's just get out of here. Right then, here we go, heading down, heading down to the left corner and let's see if this car can hold its own against the other Pegasus. No, not a chance. Okay, never mind. Sort of expected that, really, to be honest with you. As I say, this is a sort of classic car, and so there's no reason to think that it's going to handle as well as its modern-day counterparts, to use that word for about the 15th time in this video. Okay, now here we go. We're delivering the car back into the garage, and it's simply a matter of modifying this vehicle. Another extended shot of the garage door there for fans of dark garage doors. Okay, here we go. A rotating lift for no reason whatsoever. Okay, and the custom auto shop. Fantastic. Okay, here we go. Going through the standard range of options here. I'm going to have a look at the different uh, bumpers and skirts available, but I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to go for. Right then, okay then. Right, okay, what's going on there? Do I like that or not? I'm not entirely sure. Right, I think the black for the back, certainly. Okay, there we go. Right, I like those scoops, though. I think I'll keep those. Ah, uh, has a look with a spoiler at the back there. Oh, we're on the exhaust, are we? Okay. Hood? No, no, thank you. Right, front spoiler, I didn't like that, that looked rather hideous, didn't it? Okay, here we go, rear spoiler, okay, you can barely see it, right, there we are, let's have a look at that. Ah, there we go, I think that's the most suitable type of spoiler for this vehicle. Yes, okay, jolly good. Okay, turbo, yes please, wheels, what are we going to go down to now, the respray, let's have a look. You know, I do quite like how it looks in orange, if I'm perfectly honest with you, and, uh, ah, but of course... Why not go for the lime green? And yes, yes, I think I'm going to go for that, and that's because I am a real criminal. And of course, if you don't understand what that reference means, you're not a Clint Eastwood fan, and nor should you be. Okay then, right then. Okay, I think that's looking about right for my eye. Okay, let's take it to the ground and see how she handles. I don't know if you're saving up that crystal for personal consumption. That's none of your business, LJT. Okay then, right then. Okay, first corner, nice accident. My fault, can't complain. Right, we'll take it down the stretch here, see what's happening. And we're going to come to that right-hand corner and let's see if we can remember it actually exists this time. Okay, that speed's not bad to be honest with you. As you can see, it's flying perfectly well. Here we go, hitting the corner and... Okay, perhaps in better hands that car would have handled better, but it didn't go sliding off without control now, did it? Uh, probably a result of its limited top speed, but still, not unpleasant to drive, really. Certainly not comparable to some of the Dubatches or the Nier that we drove earlier, but if you want a classic 1980s-style Lamborghini, well then, this is the car to buy. Okay, jolly good, there we go, span it out again, what do you know? Okay, right, here we go, back safe and sound, and this is the end of our $10 million spending spree, I am afraid. We have had rather a lot of excitement here today, what with being blown up multiple times, and having to switch lobbies just to complete this video. Okay, here we go. One more Pegasi to the collection. Okay, so then, here we go. Here are some of the cars that we've brought today. All of the Dubatches there in the bright colours, not the Wagner or the uh, silver one at the end, of course. And here we go down here. 
Right then, there we go. We need to move our, uh, our Pegasi Torino or whatever the hell it's called into our Pegasi collection. And there we go, quite nice. Okay then, so we've got the Osiris today and we've got the Tesseract and we've got the Torino or whatever the heck it was called. Right then, well, I hope that you have enjoyed this $10 million spending spree. It was, after all, rather a good time for me. Okay then, so here we go, just to have another look at the cars. We've got the Nero, rather splendid car. I could highly recommend buying that. Okay, on the next level up here, we've got the Dubachi Exemplar. I would not recommend that. The Dubachi Massacaro, I would recommend that. We have the 770 and the Spectre. And, uh, or rather the Spectre and the 770, and those are all very, very good cars. I would highly recommend buying all of them. Okay, then, and up here on our final level, we have gone for the Pegasi. I really wish I knew what had paid attention and seen what this car was called, Torino or something like that. We've got the Pegasi Osiris and we've got the Pegasi Tesseract. All of that coming in just over at a whopping $10 million. And I hope you've enjoyed this video.